Hey guys, so this is the um, kind of uh, kind of highlight project that I'm working on here. So I've got a Kubota B2601 uh, compact tractor, which I love. Um, sitting here just after the winter, basically. So right now, I just got the bucket on it. Um, I just took the got this rear uh, grater blade or scraper blade that I used. Um, actually, it's just an old one that I picked up at a dealership last fall and it's worked wonderfully for snow. I don't know what I would have done this winter with all the snow we had without it. Um, but I also have uh, some other attachments and the primary attachment that I use with this thing, probably the most, is a grapple. Um, I've got, we live, we're surrounded by trees and it seems like when you're, when you're in an area with a lot of trees, you constantly have trees that are... Um, well, where I'm at, anyway, we've got trees that are dying all the time. So I do a lot of work with the grapple, cleaning up trees. And so what I've done before is um, I've got a box blade for this too, and I just leave the box blade on there for um, for a counterweight on the back. But that box blade hangs out, I don't know, it's probably, I'm gonna say, gosh, it's, it's gotta be at least four and a half feet, maybe more, um, from the back of the three point. So. Two things. So one, when you're back in the timber, which I am a lot, um, trying to use that, I'm constantly, you know, having to watch the the rear of my tractor to make sure I'm not smashing into stuff and, and clobbering trees. And then the other thing is, um, right now, as far as transporting this thing, when I, I take it to to different projects that I'm working on, sometimes um, all I have to transport this right now is my dump trailer. Um, and it's a it's a 12 foot dump trailer, so it's really really pushing it lengthwise. In fact, I'm I'm actually going to probably um, I'm going to make some pins uh, for that trailer so I can do kind of a quick release for the back doors because it's going to be easier if I haul this with the doors off the trailer. So I need to really watch my length of this thing. Um, so I'm I'm you know obviously can't have the box plate on it all the time. So anyway, all that said, I am starting a project build a ballast box and I've looked at a lot of the different um, options that are out there a lot of different videos that guys have done um, and I first my first plan was I was just going to do a round ballast box I actually have this old trash can and I kind of started this and set it aside but I cut the bottom off it so what I was going to do is um, take take a take this hitch bar here it's in the tractor and I was gonna, I was gonna run that through, and I was basically just gonna fill this thing full of concrete. But um, I, 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 I like to make it something that looks a little better than that. I just decided that, well, for one thing, I got a welder this winter, um, so now I've got the ability to, to get a little bit more creative. And I also wanted to be able to design it so that I've got some storage on the top for chainsaws and chains and things like that. Um, and you know, I think it's just gonna look better. I, I know it'll look better and more professional once it's done. So anyway, this idea is set aside. So a lot of the, most of the ballast boxes that I see um, in the factory ones basically just pin on to, sure right here, you can see what I'm looking at here, but basically most of the ballast boxes, um, the pins will come right out here at the front and then the box will extend back here, and then you know it's whatever varying varying height. Um, but my plan, because of my again, because I want to stay tight when I'm in the trees, and also even more so because of my trailer limitations, is I wanted to take advantage of the space uh, in between the three point here and up toward the in toward the hitch. So I played with some different designs, and this is the design that I came up with. Um, to kind of maximize my space. So what this box look like, hold one second here. I want to get this mocked up. I'm a very, a very visual person, so I've got to kind of create these things so I can see if they're going to work. But anyway, so that's basically what it's going to look like. Um, again, I've got my, I'm going to run that hitch pin through there. Not a hitch pin, but a, draw bar, I guess. Um, so I'm, I'm building a frame that's that's uh, this shape. 
Uh, it's gonna have a bottom that shape. It's gonna have a top that shape. Uh, the plan is it's gonna be the frame's gonna be 24 inches tall, and I'm gonna fill it with about 18 inches of concrete. So I've got that extra six inches on the top, you know, to be able to throw chainsaws and chains and you know that sort of thing. Um, and then with that 18 inches of concrete and the way this lays out, um, I think I'm gonna be roughly about 525 pounds of concrete, and I figure I probably easy have another $75 in steel or $75, 75 pounds of steel. So I'm probably gonna be right in the neighborhood of 600 pounds. So um, it should be about perfect for this tractor. And I've also, my tires are filled with fluid too, which was, I don't know, it's 250 pounds or something like that. So I'll have plenty of counterweight, I think when I'm, um, when I'm lifting with the front and, uh, and it's gonna be, you know, a nice design that stays compact to the tractor. The challenge is when you do this, you end up with all these crazy angles um, that of course makes, makes things more difficult to build. So I started last night. This is, uh, you can kind of see that overall design again. So it's 30 inches wide, 10 in the front, and then I've got just, uh, those are six, six, and those are 14 on the diagonals. My rough kind of drawing here, you can see that, that draw bar coming through. Oh, and I'm also going to add in a uh, receiver hitch on the back. Um, that's kind of critical for moving trailers around here. So that's going to come in real handy as well. But that's the basic design. So I started this last night. You can see what I've got. These are all just kind of rough cut. Um, and But they're, they fit up pretty good. So now my plan is I just actually picked up a... Uh, saw, an abrasive chop saw, uh, because all this here I did with an with a angle grinder and it took me forever because <clears throat> cutting angle iron with an angle grinder and trying to have uh, precise angles isn't the easiest thing to do. So <clears throat> I decided to pick up a saw and I'll, I'll use it and I'm sure lots for other projects as well. So uh, I just wanted to kind of, uh, kind of pre preface this video with, with what I'm working on. Um, kind of, I'll kind of keep track of steps as I go here, so you can see how the project goes. Uh, and, and when it's done, I may even have my son. My son's um, good with. Uh, he can he can actually turn this design and put it into a CAD drawing, um, and then probably put dimensions and things to it and, and put a PDF. So I might be able to um, take a picture and actually attach that to this video, so in case anybody's interested in doing something similar. And uh, I'll, I'll talk to him about doing that for me, but anyway, I thought any uh, other guys I know ballast box or I mean it's kind of a mandatory for these little tractors, probably all tractors actually, and there's a million different designs out there, but um, I thought I'd just share my take on it. So uh, hopefully you get something out of this. Enjoy it. Thanks. Uh, this is. I built a, I modified my brush guard on my tractor and I've kind of done some playing with just scrap metal, but other than that, I'm a brand new welder really, so, um, so I'm by no means a great welder, but I've watched a million videos online and I um, think I kind of got the, the basics of the best way to, to build a strong, uh, to build strong joints. So anyway, I'll, I'm going to overlap these here, which is how I notch these. Um, and then I'll end up actually beveling out here and then the joining piece so that I create um, like a V-bevel where I weld in. Because that's what I saw the other guys do on, on uh, YouTube. So that's what I'm going to do too. notches out like this so basically the so 
So the next piece going up on the frame is gonna fit into that notch like that. That's how it'll fit up. I'm gonna have left an open corner here so I can weld up on that corner. Um, so this is the notch that I'm gonna take now. This piece of steel here is uh, what I'm gonna use for the sides of the ballast box. And so I just threw it on some saw horses to use to clamp and cut on. Since I don't have a proper welding bench yet, welding table. Alright, now let me check it out. Get up. <clears throat> <clears throat> so that looks pretty good. So my goal at the end is I want to leave an open corner here so I can weld that <clears throat> weld up that outside corner and notches in there and again I'm gonna I'll bevel this side and this side so that I have a nice V groove to weld into. I'll also build a bevel the back, so I've got a V-groove all over the place, so I should be able to have a nice strong weld. And uh, so there you go, piece number one, which is this bottom. Well, I gotta, I gotta finish notching this side yet, obviously. But once I get that notched, I'll have piece number one, which is the 30-inch piece, um, and is the far rear uh, portion of the ballast box. Okay, so I've got the top frame. Uh, pretty well fit up now um, and definitely went much quicker a lot easier using that chop saw than an angle grinder is crazy to even do that the first uh, the first frame so now uh, about the only thing that I've got to do before I can start tacking these frames up is um, most of these are fairly fairly tight joints so what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, basically bevel um, all these joints here, I'm going to mark them, which I don't really need to mark them. But, um, anyway, I'm going to I'm going to bevel all these joints on the bench grinder, so then I have then I'll have a V. So when I run my weld in there, I'll be able to really drive a good weld in there and uh, be able to get a, a good uh, a good solid connection on those. And what I also need to do is on these outside corners, because I want those to be welded. Um, actually, that's probably even more critical. Now that I think about this, so on the bottom frame, um, I think I'm going to do what I just said. But on the top, on the top frame, since this will actually this will actually be inverted, so you'll see the flat part. You won't see the the bottom of the angle here. To have that look best, actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do what I just said, but I'm going to bevel the top here, here, and that way I can lay a bead in there and get a nice weld, and it won't just lay on the surface and look a lot better. Because, granted, it's just a ballast box, but I figure, you know, I kind of subscribe to the mentality of anything worth doing is worth doing right, so. I don't want it to. I want it to look good because it's something I put a lot of time into. So that's actually what I'm going to do is bevel the out, those outsides. Um, so I'll basically just kind of tack it on the inside, but the primary weld will be on the outside. So time to go to the bench grinder and start working these things over. Except it's not actually a bench; it's on a stand. something I can actually weld into and get a good looking weld. So I just have to do that to all these pieces and I'll be ready to start tacking things together. Okay, so at this point I've got the bottom that's the bottom frame and I've welded up the still a little bit warm. 
I've welded it up uh, from the inside. Actually, I see a couple of little spots that I need to weld yet, but um, anyway, I've got it pretty well, uh, pretty well stuck together. Some of those welds don't look too bad for a beginner. I still need to come back, and I'm gonna I need to weld up these outside corners. Um, but everything fit up pretty good. I'm pretty happy with the way that turned out. So at this point, I'm just starting to do the same thing. And this is the top here. Um, so I'm gonna, this is the one I've actually beveled. I beveled the inside a little bit just for tacking, but I've beveled the, the outside too, because that'll be the visible part. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw a few welds on here. And again, I'm not a welder. I'm just a, uh, I'm a weekend hack, so. Not gonna be perfect, but it'll work for what it is. I'm using the uh, I'm using my Hobart um, 210 MVP welder, and I'm running um, on the volt setting. I'm running five and about 40 on the wire speed, which seems to work pretty good with what I'm doing here on this 3 16 steel. small tacks in here for now so I don't heat it up too much and have everything bend and go crazy on me. So again, my plan, I'm gonna, not my plan, I'm going to, I just want to tack that because it's obviously easier laying flat, but I'm actually gonna flip it now, let everything cool a little bit. And welding it out, I'm gonna, I'm gonna weld it from the top side. There you can see how I've I've got those bevels all opened up. Hopefully I don't end up with I've got my wire speed down just a little bit lower than than uh, uh, welder spec says is 50, and I've got it down at 40. Um, hopefully I can move fairly quickly and not end up with a big mound of of weld there. But then. Nah. And this one, I'm not going to bother welding that, that's the bottom. I do need to weld the outside corners. So maybe I'll actually do that one first. Since it's the bottom, it's a little less visible, so... My learning curve won't be quite so obvious as I'm... for the top side, which would be more visible. I gotta say, I do enjoy this uh, this welding. It's kind of fun. All right, let's see how these outside corners go. I'm gonna weld from top down. Yeah, 
ugly, ugly, ugly. I did say I'm not a welder, right? See that I'm kind of a little porosity there, which I think is maybe a wire speed issue. That was a little bit better. Not wonderful though. Tweak my wire speed just a little bit and see if that helps. Okay, both that one up a little bit there. I'm going up to 50, which is actually what the box, what the welder calls for for 316s. Let's see. better. I don't know if you can see that one, but that's actually a decent looking weld. Definitely good enough for who it's for. too bad. Here, I'll show you this one. <laughs> that one doesn't look too bad. But you know what? It's stuck together, so I'll just keep welding it out and once I get these frames done, it's time, it's time to start doing the, the verticals. Alright guys, so I wanted to uh, kind of give you an update here. I kind of uh, did a fast forward from <clears throat> from the last clip of the video that I got recorded. My battery actually went dead um, when I was kind of in the middle of putting this thing together. So I didn't get to take you along for the step-by-step -step ride. But um, I think the last I showed you probably I had, had built the frame. So I've got the, the top frame and a matching bottom frame that I built. Um, basically what I did was took, this is all inch and a half. Uh, I took inch and a half angle iron for these back corners here, and then because again I like to make things complicated, uh, I basically took inch and a half flat bar and I created uh, basically built angle iron at the angle that I needed um, for uh, for these other four corners, so two fronts on the side. So I got everything. I kind of got carried away with the grinding on this thing. I really didn't intend to grind all these welds, but I had a couple really ugly welds. That I didn't like, and once I started it, there's really there's no good place to stop. So anyway, I ended up grinding all this off. I'm gonna have to, now that I started this, I've got to grind it up a little bit better so it you know so it looks good, but it's good enough for for now to move forward. So um, the next steps here, actually, I think the next steps I've got eighth inch plate which I'm gonna add um, to the sides and the bottom, um, and just to kind of reiterate, eventually this thing's gonna be filled with concrete. And before I, before I actually cut my plate and get it welded in, uh, my attachment on this thing, I've got this draw bar um, that I picked up. Rather than you know, trying to figure out how to weld in pins and stuff, especially since I've got this 45 degree angle here, I'm just gonna take this, this category one draw bar and this is gonna go through here like this um, to attach to my three point. 
My plan is I think I'm going to keep this up 12 inches, which will be, which is basically half the, um, this whole, whole uh, assembly is 24 inches. So the draw bar is going to be approximately there. And then also I've got a two inch um, receiver hitch tube that I'm going to put in here. I mentioned before that I want to make sure I can move trailers with this thing, um, which is really going to make things handy. So that's going to be mounted in the back and I'm going to bury it as deep as I can just so I can still get to a pin. I don't want it to stick out any farther than I have to because I've got limitations, trailer limitations with this thing um, in length. So I'm, I'm still trying to keep things compact as possible. So anyway, this is going to go back here and I haven't decided for sure. I think I'm probably going to, I'm probably going to mount that around 12 inches also. Um, so it'll be about the same point as the, uh, as the three point, um, as the draw bar is, for the pins with three points. So I think that'll work good. Um, so at this point, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to work on just kind of mocking this up. Um, I've got to decide, oh, and one, sorry. The other, <clears throat> the other thing that I need to include here, My top link, rather than manufacturing something, I picked this up a while, a while back, this adapter for the top link. So um, this is actually gonna sit inside here. And um, for the top link to go to, I'm probably, because this I, I made this assembly 24 inches, um, the actual frame itself, but I'm planning to go about 18 inches of concrete. That 18 inches of concrete is somewhere, I think with this shape, if my calculations are right, somewhere about 525 pounds um, between, between the steel of the frame and then all the extra steel that I'm putting in here. I'm gonna say, you know, we're probably gonna be in the neighborhood of another, you know, easily 50 to 75 pounds probably. So we're gonna be probably pretty close to 600 pounds, which I think is gonna be just about right. Um, and then again, that six inches of space on the top will give me a little room that I can throw, you know, set chainsaws in there and throw chains and just be able to haul a few things in there pretty easily. Um, but anyway, with, the reason I said that is because this, uh, this top link adapter, I need it to be high enough that the top link can reach in here okay, but yet it needs to be low enough that I'm going to be able to get a good, uh, get it set in the concrete. Um, so I think what I'm probably going to have to do because I don't want just, you know, a couple inches of this thing. So I think what I'm ending up doing is I'm going to weld some plate on the side, um, probably inch and a half actually, just some flat bar, either some angle, probably some flat bar. I'll probably weld a piece on this side and a weld a piece on this side. I can get it all welded up, you know, three sides really well. Um, and then that flat bar will stick down in the concrete and um, I probably, Actually, I think what I might be able to do is get this whole assembly. You can see this. Get this assembly set up so once it's in the, actually inside the frame. Yeah, I think I can probably do that. I should be able to position this so that I can get so that inch and a half plate. Imagine will come down off of here, and I can probably get that welded either to the side of that bar or to the top of the draw bar. And then I can also have maybe some angle iron coming across. I think what I'll we'll probably do is have, have angle iron coming across the back of the, of the uh, hitch tube. And then I'll, I'll weld it. Well, actually what I'll do is I'll come across the bottom of the hitch tube and then weld it to the top of the draw bar. So that'll give me a real good connection there. And then I can come down with my inch and a half from this uh, top link adapter and I can weld in this whole assembly. So basically I'll have a, I'll have, you know, like a triangle here, not really a triangle, but I'll have, I'll have three axes of, of everything welded up inside the frame. And then I'll probably have, I'll have at least a couple of crossbars, maybe some rod or something. I want to, in case all this concrete eventually cracks in here, I just want to make sure that there's some steel in there so it kind of holds its structure. Of course, you know, it's inside a frame, but I still like to have a little bit of additional steel. Um, so I'll probably run some crossbars down maybe to the back um, of this whole assembly just to keep everything all set up in there. Plus it'll be a lot easier to, you know, rather than having to kind of rig it all up and, and temp it up in there, if I've got it all welded solid with steel sitting in there, 
when I pour concrete, I don't have to worry about it. I can just dump the concrete in and it's not gonna, you know, jostle things out of position. So anyway, kind of long, long winded explanation here what I'm gonna do, but um, that's gonna be my project for today. So I think I'm just gonna get things, um, I'm gonna get it kind of temp, tempt, uh, tempt up. I may even kind of tack it into place. And then once I'm happy with how everything's laid out, um, then I will then I'll cut my, my eighth inch plate sides and I'll just, I'll just knock loose my tacks, um, lay my eighth inch plate sides in, get those tacked in, and then I'll have to cut holes, obviously. I'll have to cut a hole for the, for the back tube. I'll have to cut a hole for my, uh, for this draw bar to go through there and try to cut those as cleanly as I can. I wish I had a plasma cutter, but I don't, so I'll have to do it with, uh, just do it with an uh, angle grinder. And uh, then we can start welding things up um, for permanent. So that's the project for now.
here, guys. So <clears throat> to the point now where I've got um, I've got all my pieces cut um, <clears throat> for my for all the sides. The only thing I don't have cut yet is for the bottom, and I've got I'm gonna have to splice a couple pieces together to make that work. But I've got everything cut. Um, got my front where my uh, hitch is gonna run through. My front, my back. Obviously, where the hitch is going to run through. Um, I've got my two sides cut, which is where that draw bar is going to run through. Those are a little, a little bit tricky, but I've got those cut. We'll slide in there. My draw bar will slide through. My challenge, and I knew this was going to be a challenge, is this back plate, which is about 30 inches. I thought I might be able to shoehorn this in here somewhere by going in and kind of finding the right angle to get this to pop into the back, but it's not going to happen. So, because because I got this angle iron. So what I'm going to do is <clears throat> I was thinking about trying to bend this plate, popping it in, straighten it out, but I really don't want to mess with that. So what I've decided is going to be easier is I am just going to notch. Take the grinder and I'm just going to put notches in this angle iron um, and that way I can slide it in but I don't want to notch the top so I'm actually going to I'm just going to notch the bottom if I go about halfway in uh, about three quarters of an inch or two an inch inside that angle iron then I can just drop that back plate in there once I get that all in position then I'll just I'll just weld those back shut and it's going to be on the bottom so you'll never see it so Anyway, that's what I'm working on now. Disc isn't quite wide enough, so I need to open those up a little bit more. This whole thing's gonna kind of get pieced together. Um, so I've got my back plate in there finally. Um, got my, my two side plates. Got my draw bar, and I've already uh, taken the flat disc and I've taken the paint off the draw bar, as well as the uh, the receiver tube. So that's gonna go in. So basically, this draw bar. I'm from the front. This will be much easier once I get these plates back in, but I just obviously just kind of dry fitting everything for now, so. That draw, draw bar is going to go through like that. Receiver 
tube is going to go up to here, like that. And what I'm going to do, let's see if I can show this to you. Um, I'm going to take angle iron. I'm going to take angle iron and I'm going to weld that to the top of the draw or to the uh, receiver tube. I'm going to weld one piece on each side and then I'm going to, it's actually going to be through hard with one hand. It's going to be through like that. So that'll get welded to the bottom of the draw bar and then that'll be basically one, um, you know, it'll create a, a strong T there with uh, with the hitch and the three point draw bar uh, tied together. And then I'm also going to take the the top link adapter, which is going to come through basically like this. Um, I think I'm going to run this on an angle. I want to leave as much space in here as I can. So as I've mentioned, I want to be able to drop chainsaws in here um, to haul them around. And my, a couple of my saws are kind of big. So if I stick it out here above the draw bar like you traditionally would, it really eats, it leaves me very little space. So I, I think there's no reason not to do this um, to kind of maximize my space in there. But then I'm going to weld, um, grab a piece here. I'm going to weld a couple pieces of flat bar onto here. And that flat bar is going to go all the way down. And it's going to get welded into the T created by the hitch in the draw bar. Uh, I'm probably going to get this welded directly to the hitch, uh, to the hitch tube. And so I'm going to have, uh, have multiple connections of steel here. So uh, between that, and uh, probably some cross braces coming off of the, the three-point draw bar uh, down to the bottom. Um, I'm going to probably run maybe two, maybe four pieces down to the bottom frame of this from that draw bar. Everything's going to be everything's going to be solid. That way, if the, if the concrete ever cracks in there, it won't make any difference. Everything's all tied together, and, and everything's going to be strong. So, to the point now where next step, I'm going to start tacking in these steel plates. Um, get everything nice and level where I want it. Um, I, I cut the plates so that there's a little bit of slop in there so I can get everything positioned. So I'm just going to get them tacked in first um, and then start actually uh, welding the steel together. So I'll show you those next steps once I get there. Okay guys, time for an update video. I got, uh, got the ballast box um, pretty much welded together now. Got all the sides, basically the sides. Oops, all the sides I tacked in from the inside. Next step is I'm going to come and just lay some uh, lay some small beads on the outside. I'll probably just lay like um, the camera there. Probably just lay like three beads on each side, uh, just to make sure that it's secure because those tacks in there are, are uh, pretty pretty tough, pretty minimal. It's kind of tough to tack inside that box like that. Um, but as you see, I got my draw bar uh, run through. Let me adjust this camera just a little bit here so I can maneuver it. Got the draw bar run through. Um, I got the, um, got my top link in there. And I got my best part is my receiver hitch in there. It's gonna be great for moving track trailers. I can't wait. So I got my I got that draw bar kicked ahead at a pretty good angle. Or draw bar, the um, the top link bracket. Sorry, I'm tired, it's been a long day. Got that at a pretty good angle. Uh, and I got it welded. How well you can see. Okay, this should help. So you can see that I got the top link uh, welded to the um, to the receiver hitch, which is also welded to the draw bar. And then I just threw some random pieces of uh, rebar and some steel and just some crap that I had laying around in there. I just wanted to give this some additional steel into that concrete. Got them all welded off to the to the draw bar and then welded into the corners and just kind of random places in there. Um, and I just threw this, uh, I want to make sure 
to help with concrete cracking, I welded this bracket in here uh, to get the top link bracket uh, firmly attached to the frame. So that's it. That'll be down, set into the concrete, welded in, and attached to the frame. So anyway, that's it. At this point, like I said, I'm going to uh, go around. I'm going to throw a few welds on the outside, and then I'm going to just kind of clean it up with the um, uh, with the sander and it's going to be ready for concrete. So I don't know. I might, you know, I might throw a coat of paint on it before I um, before I put the concrete in it. Cause I don't know. It might be easier just for for moving it around. And I have some of these welds. Like I need a weld around here too. Yet I, that's all just basically tacked in. So I'll make sure to have those all welded off nice, so everything's clean and tight so I don't have hopefully concrete gooping all over the place. But anyway, that's the update for now. I'll bring you back when we're uh, another step further. Thanks. tacked up. Last step, knocking it down real quick with I'm using denatured alcohol. Get any oil and residue off. And I'm going to hit this baby with a couple good coats of primer. And then, probably not tonight, but Hopefully by tomorrow night, I'll be putting a coat of black paint on it. I'm really happy with how it's turned out so far. This thing's going to be super handy. And uh, I'll bring you back when I'm, uh, after I've got some paint on. kind of light coats of primer here and then I'll probably do at least a good couple coats of paint heck with this thing I could even I can even paint left-handed and I can't do crap with my left hand Exciting night, I'm not gonna lie. I'm kind of excited to get to this point. This thing's been a fair amount of work uh, to get this built and got it all primed yesterday. And it's time to get a coat of black paint on this thing. So get a good couple coats of black on tonight, and then the only thing left to do is fill with concrete. So let's get this thing painted up. Ah Bad nozzle. Okay, there we go. Opened up a little bit. Ooh, ah, here we go. Get back up and go full paint and mom's gonna kick my butt. This 
is Maisie over here, her boxer. My wife's baby. Turning out good. All right, let's keep going. Okay guys, so uh, we are finally to the point of putting concrete in this thing. Uh, you can see we got her all painted up, nice and black. Turned out really well, I think. So nice, I'm gonna be sad the first time. I, sad the first time I scratch it, even though it's just a ballast box. But anyway, so now, um, kind of been dreading doing this because I hate mixing concrete, not my favorite job, but that's what we're gonna do. So I'm gonna, uh, I opted, opted to paint this thing first, just because I thought it'd be easier for kind of moving around and stuff. So now I don't want to slop concrete all over it. So uh, I'm actually going to try to protect it a little bit. So what I'm going to do is take this tarp, a couple of these little C-clamps, and I'm just going to drape it all around. That way when I inevitably slop concrete, I will, I won't slop it all over my fresh paint. I'm sure I'll have to do a little bit of touch-ups, but, which isn't the end of the world, but I really like to keep as protected as possible, so I'll do this first. Now, I'm going to make some concrete. See better from this side, maybe. It all runs out, so get it, get it mixed quick. Maze is here to help again today, of course. My number one helper. I'm 
got, I'm guessing I've got about six, I've got about 100 pounds of steel there. And I, I don't know that this little B tractor, if I want to, I really want to be much over 600 pounds. I think the three points rated, I don't know, don't quote me, I, I'm thinking it's like 1,700 pounds is rated for. So I don't think there's really any weight in is actually not good it's not strong and it's more prone to cracking so you actually want it to be pretty dry no dry spots but the mix itself should be fairly dry if you really want the strongest concrete you can get it's going to resist cracking I mix it to the instructions for these particular bags. It's three quarts to a gallon, or three quarts to a bag. So I had six quarts, um, a gallon and a half that I measured out. So I'm going to go with the instructions and keep it nice and dry. It should make for a nice, strong mix. The only bad thing about having it dry like this is it makes it a little harder to. It's all down in the nooks and crannies everywhere.
All right, time to unwrap the Christmas present here. I know some of you guys are probably saying this is way overly anal, but I don't care. Sometimes I am a little anal. I forgot to plug the end of my receiver tube, but luckily concrete's thick enough it's not running out. I may, I think I'm going to stick a hitch in there. Pitch in here because it's got it plugged in. If there's anything in there, it'll. Oh, I'm good. Yep, I'm good. No problem. Should have about five inches there. Five, five and a half. Uh, four inches, a little bit less than I. I guess my math on figuring the shape of this thing was off. Although I guess I do have steel in there that takes up some space, but my math isn't so good, so I probably just messed, messed up, messed up my calculation. But it's all right. It's gonna be it's gonna work really well, I think. Just trying to really make sure I get this in. So all that steel on the bottom, I really want to make sure it's all. I don't have any voids in there. Like there, that felt like one penetration in there. receiver tube. I definitely mixed this last batch way too thin. I wanted it a little bit thinner so I could work it, but I didn't mean to make it quite this thin. Project. It took me a little longer than I planned on, but I think it's turned out really well. I'm happy with what I've got here. So next time I'll show you. Uh, we'll let this set up. I'll probably let it set here for a couple of days. And uh, next time I show you, I'll have it on the back of the tractor, and we'll see how it works, picks up, and everything. So thanks for watching. See you soon.
guys, I want to shoot one final video here on the ballast box build for the uh, Kubota. Um, it's been about a week and a half now since I poured the concrete and it's all set up good. Um, as you can saw, see from the, uh, from the video clip there, my, that was the first time I've tried using my, uh, my ball hit and it's perfect. I can just barely, when I look up, I can just see over the top of the ballast box so I can actually see the ball going into the hitch, which is perfect. I was hoping I'd be able to see. Um, back up. Pick it up and go. So much, so much easier um, than either having to, and that's just a little trailer, but I've got a big dump trailer too. Um, that either I got to mess around with actually putting a ball on the tractor, backing up to it, or usually I use my truck. Um, and this is just making life so much easier. So, worked out great as far as being able to throw saws in here. Um, all my saw, my big saw fits in there too. I can throw chains in there. Um, everything, everything worked out good. So, um, I haven't really done any hard work with it yet, but um, just kind of bouncing around a little bit here. I can. There's definitely weight. Um, like I said before, I think we ended up about 600 pounds, um, which is um, uh, plenty, plenty of weight for this thing. And I don't know. I maybe uh, I could have probably gotten away with a little bit less since I do have my tires filled too. But um, I wanted to make sure that I have plenty of weight, can have a nice low uh, center of gravity, working on around all the hills out here and this is going to work great so appreciate you guys sticking with me i know this is kind of a long video but hopefully uh hopefully you enjoyed it and got a little bit out of it if uh if you wouldn't mind i appreciate it if you'd subscribe to my channel see some future videos that we've got coming up and uh, see what else we can do with this tractor so thanks again guys appreciate it